is this Alabama's SEC championship and maybe national championship to lose? Absolutely, Mike. I mean, look, I, here, here's the deal is, is you've got the top two players in the country, arguably. I believe Bryce Young's the best quarterback in terms of going to the league. I think he'll be the first quarterback drafted. I think he'll play earlier than anybody Time else. Out. Okay, what do you got? C.J. Stroud? I, I, right now, I think he's better than him. Okay, I love that. I Listen, I, tell, you tell me. And, and when, Felder, when, come on back that way after after that. Come on yeah. back. To- look, look, when, when, it come, when it comes to – navigating the pocket, delivering every ball on the field with ease, not having to get your body right, being mechanically sound, having confidence, being ready to step in physically to the league and not just have like high ceiling, like potential, but like legitimately get me in the game and his game's going to translate directly to the NFL. They're all great. Don't get me wrong. We're splitting hairs here. But I believe that Bryce Young is the dude right now that can step in the league and play. I believe he'll be the number one overall pick. And if he's not, I believe Will Anderson will be. And okay. Will Ander- Will Anderson is being the, 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 in my opinion, the best pass rusher in the game. You got those two guys coming back. And Mike, real quick, Nick Saban don't hand out too many damn compliments. No. Nick Saban stood his ass up there at SEC Media Days, Mike, and he said, "I don't know that I've ever had a guy on each side of the football in terms of leadership, along with." the caliber player that they are, I don't know that I've ever had that in Alabama. When Nick Saban says that, I'm not putting him second to anybody. So to answer your question, absolutely the SEC is is Saban's and Bama's to lose. I See, here's the thing, and I'm going to get – G-Dub, I'm going to let you get in there. There is one question that I, I want both of you. And, and George, I want to get you, and then Clint, I want to get you on this. So let's start with George. Do you think – and I think about – I think Stroud – and Young are intrinsically related because they are both quarterbacks of color and they both do not run. They don't run. And do you think that that's a big part of after RIP Dwayne Haskins, obviously, and hearing about Tua Tango Vailoa, do you think that they think about that a lot and that they don't, they're worried that they don't be labeled as running quarterbacks, even though we know when they decide to run, they can do it. Let me go G dub and then Clint, you get in right after him. Woo, that's a heavy, that's a heavy kickoff, but let's go at it. Okay, so let's go at the the ideology of the black quarterback. I don't think these guys think about that. Okay. They've watched Teddy Bridgewater. He yeah. never goes past the line of scrimmage. They've seen Geno Smith. Uh for all of us, we watched Byron Luffwich. Sure. Big old rifle. He wasn't going down. He but wasn't they've going also, down. But they've right. also seen what happens to Lamar Jackson. Well, like when a like when an MVP and 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 star 30 some odd games at Louisville. Right. Like you like you are what you are. And it is good to see some diversity. Not every quarterback of color has a big superhero okay. cape and is leaping over humans. You, you can play the game like Matt Ryan. You can play the game like Clint Sterner. You can go out there and and run an offense, a well-oiled machine like a, yeah. a Kirk Cousins, and you can do it with your own flair. You can – like, you are what you are. I don't think – just from knowing these guys, like knowing them. I trained sure. Bryce Young, I know. seventh and eighth grader. That's why That's I started with him. in his thought process. I need to be quick enough to be quick. I need to keep plays alive. I can't get caught back here in the pocket. But he's also not thinking I need to get a buck 50 today on the ground. I need to get first downs in the matter I can get first downs. So I don't think they think about that, but it is interesting you brought that up. To, to Clint's point, I I have three crowns coming into this season, like three preseason crowns. The, 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 the game's best general from a quarterback standpoint is Bryce Young, most battle tested. Everything Clint said about him is right. That's the game's best general. Under the most pressure, delivers under all that pressure. Those two 90-plus yard drives against Auburn when they had to have it. Yeah. And Auburn, they're, they're sending five, six, and they're dropping the rest, and they're coming from all lanes, and he – all the way down the field. Mech- Mechie's out. Uh, he, it's him, Jamison Williams. He's got to figure out, okay, he's your best general. To me, C.J. Stroud is your best passer. Great, great route, great coverage. He's a difference maker. 
he just doesn't like, yeah, there are some things Bryce does that CJ really doesn't do in terms of navigation. But when you watch the ball play in and play out down the field, to me, Stroud has a step on him. The other third crown to me is out West. Caleb Williams is a monster. My indelible play from last football season came in Lawrence, Kansas. Like, who's going to say that? Oklahoma at Kansas. Oklahoma's found themselves in a barroom brawl in a spot they ain't supposed to be in on their back. In a bar, they should have blew through there and got on their Harley and got out of there, and they got <laughs> caught. Third down and two. They go for a run play, dive off the right tackle. Back gets busted up in the backfield. Caleb goes back there, takes the ball, and goes and gets the first down. That was an impression. Getting the ball in the second quarter against Texas, when they're up there getting molly whopped against Texas, 80-yard touchdown run, 70-yard touchdown throw, two more touchdown drives. Like, he's a big home run hitter. That's your biggest monster. So there's a general right now. That's Bryce. Your best passer. That's Stroud right now. And to me, your monster nationally and especially on the West Coast is Caleb. Now, the kid down in Gainesville is going to have something to say about that monster part. But like, well, Clint listen, saying, yeah. hey, we're, we're going to get to him. Let's get to him. Clint, you t- tell me what you think about that. About like but, uh, how Stroud and how how Stroud and Bryce Young have to navigate kind of that space where they just they don't want the label. Yeah, uh, Mike. I mean, I, I I completely understand where you're coming from, and 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 I and I don't want to minimize that that label is out there, and I'm I'm, I'm aware of it. But as I look as I look at the NFL landscape today, I, I yeah. feel like if you come into the league, black, white, Hispanic, I don't I don't give a damn what what it is. If you come into the league and you don't have holes in your game, you're going to be given an opportunity. You're going to be drafted first overall. You're going to be yes. given the opportunity. And if you don't have holes in your game, you're going to succeed at an extremely high level. Yes. Now, that, that I mean, whether the guys get that opportunity to develop their game, things of that nature, I, I can't speak to that. But when I talk about C.J. Stroud and Bryce Young, I, I, I view both of those guys as dudes that don't have holes in their game. I think Bryce is a better natural passer of the football, like like legit, like touch and all the little uh, up in the arm slot and and the and and the and the, the like like effortless accuracy. I no, think talk, Bryce. Hey, hey, I'm calling. Uh, talk about it because I think that's important. I want you listen. You guys are two quarterbacks. You guys know about yeah. playing quarterback, right? So talk yeah. about that arm. Like I love. That's the thing I love about Bryce Young is the way that he changes his arm slot, the way that he's able to make off-platform throws, I love that about him. So, yeah, I want you to get into that because, to me, that's what that's what I love about how he yeah. plays. Mike, I, like, I, I watch Bryce Young play, and, and, and I see I see a guy that, that makes very difficult things because I've tried to do it, and I could just flat-ass couldn't do it. Like, he makes them look simple. And you know who mm-hmm. else does that? You know who else does that? Pat Mahomes, yeah. Josh Allen. Yep. I mean, there's a handful of them. Like, I, I think I think Aaron Rodgers is the best quarterback I've ever seen play the position. Big picture, if we just check every box, in my opinion. Yes. But but when it comes when it comes down to taking your body out of throws and just and whipping it around the park in, in underneath ten yards, like Aaron Aaron doesn't he does he's not necessarily in the best of the the Pat Mahomes world of doing those things. Right. He gets it, he gets his base set in every single throw and then throws with power and it's beautiful. So anyway, we can get off in these quarterback weeds. But my point is, as you were talking about, like, Lamar, I love Lamar Jackson. He won an MVP, but he's got a hole in his game, man. You know what I mean? Like, I, whatever he's got to fight, I completely respect it and understand it. But he's got a damn hole in his game, man. I'm talking about when I when I look at Bryce Young and I look at C.J. Stroud, I think these dudes are going to walk in the league and you're going to have a hell of a time finding a hole in their game. Outside of them being a rookie, you're going to have a hard time finding it. Well, He's not processing at a high level. Well, he's not throwing the ball over the middle at a high level. Well, he's not reading the pressure and getting the ball out. He's not setting his feet. He can't throw it off platform. They can do it all, man. And yeah. and, and with, with the, the day you – to me, find me a quarterback that doesn't have holes in his games, and if he yeah. doesn't get an opportunity, I'm going to raise hell with you, baby. And I think about that a lot because I, I, was, I went to UNC, so watching Sam Howell. Sam Howell's the best quarterback UNC's ever had, and – 
that's no disrespect to my buddy TJ Yates, but um, Sam Howell, he had a really tough time between the hashes. And so it was, he had a rough, he had a rough time with that. So you talk about holes in the game. I think about that. Um, when we speak about holes in the game and I, listen, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta get moving. Um, <laughs> hey, Michael, real quick. I, I want to give Clint, uh, his, uh, his respect. He said something, probably not even thinking about it. You said black, white, or Hispanic, which yeah. I respect because a lot of times in moments like that, when you're trying to get across a point where you got to traverse race, basically saying it doesn't matter to most people would say black, white, blue, green, blue, green doesn't exist. And therefore they wash it out. You took the higher step up. And I respect you for that by saying black, white, Hispanic, keep it within the realm. It's okay to talk about that. Just speak on it. But sure. you did. I respect it. Just, you know, just so the audience knows, I respect that, man. All right. Cheers, everyone. Well, yeah, taking that on like that. Go ahead, Michael. It's your show. No, it's listen, it's our show. But what <laughs> I was going to say was 